I just hopped out the shower and you're probably wondering, oh, was it was it a cold shower or did you just take like a normal shower? And <clears throat> so the reason I hopped on into the shower was because I literally just finished my leg day and I was sweating like so much. So obviously after your workout and stuff, you get into the shower, but you shouldn't be taking a cold shower after your workouts because cold showers, right, they decrease or what they do is they decrease or reduce the effectiveness of lactic acid in your muscles and that's it uh, counteracts muscle protein synthesis or like muscle repair because lactic acid in the system actually signals um, like muscle repair, right? And if you're decreasing or reducing the effect of lactic acid, that means that <clears throat> there is less signaling to repair your muscles. So you're counteracting your muscles. So that's why I would say don't have cold showers before your, like, I mean, sorry, after your, your workouts because like I said, it counteracts your gains. So just take like a lukewarm shower or just like a, a hot shower in general. And if you do take cold showers, just know that you are alleviating soreness in the expense of building muscles and you are losing gains at that point. So it, it just, just be aware that taking cold showers after workouts does decrease your ability to, like your muscles, your muscles ability to recover basically. But yeah, that's besides the point. Uh, today I'll be just talking about my top four exercises on how to basically my top four leg exercises and how to optimize like, hypertrophy for your legs and hypertrophy is just a fancy word for muscle growth <clears throat> so these are in like chronological order which just means in time order so I'll be starting off with the so I'll just be going out through, through my workout in like the exercises in order of like my workout so I start off with leg extension and then I'll move on to the hack squat calf raises and then most people think that the leg press like is a good effective exercise and in this video I'll also be going over why the leg press is like the most useless biggest waste of time like you can possibly do especially when training for your legs so starting off with the leg extension I prefer to start off my leg workout with <clears throat> a leg extension movement as it isolates the quads preparing them for the heavy compound movement coming up which is the hack squat as I previously mentioned and the leg extension is great for warming up as it places minimal stress on your joints while driving large amounts of blood into your muscle. Like this especially helped me cure my knee pain and potentially may help cure yours. And I've actually got a video going over how you can cure your knee pain and stuff. And I'll link it here top right of the vid. And <clears throat> yeah, I just like starting off with the leg extension because as I mentioned, it just really puts minimal stress on your joints. And if you start off with a heavy compound movement such as, I don't know, deadlifts or something or like squats, Especially when your joints aren't warmed up at all. This, this is what like caused my knee pain. Like before, I started in, like starting off with um, a leg extension, and I started off with a hack squat, for example. That would place so much stress on my joints, especially when they're not warmed up. And then later that day, I would I wouldn't be able to walk up. Like I just genuinely wouldn't be able to walk because that's how bad the pain will get. So make sure you're starting off with the leg extension as your warm up exercise, and that's how I personally do it at least. The hack squat, I see it as a more versatile version or form as the barbell squat as the positioning of your feet allows for you to target either your hamstrings or your your quads so if the main focus is to grow your quads so in the video you right now that's playing you can see that there's a ramp so you'd place your feet lower down on the ramp which is what you can see that i'm doing in the video so placing your feet lower down on the ramp targets your quads whereas if you want to target your hamstrings more you'd place your quads not your quads your feet higher up on the ramp and I personally target my quads, like I said, because I wouldn't really target my hamstrings on the hack squat because my next exercise, as I mentioned previously, is the hip thrusts. And hip thrusts do actually target your, your hamstrings. So I don't personally find using the hack squat to target my hamstrings very effective. Or like I personally just focus on my quads whenever I'm doing the hamstring. For hip thrusts, far too many people underestimate the importance, importance of the glutes in your body. And I'd go as far to say they are the most important posterior muscle in your legs and in your lower body, which just means like the muscles like in the back part of your legs, so your hamstring and your glutes. I'd say your glutes are more important than your hamstrings. And this is because glutes actually contribute to athletic like activities such as sprinting and jumping. So a lot more than the hamstrings actually do. So therefore, like seeing so many beginners neglecting their glutes by not performing hip thrusts or deadlifts can have can actually have detrimental effects on your health and like just long-term pain because imbalances on uh, of your glutes so like inferior glutes or weak glutes can lead to lower back pain they can actually lead to knee pain and even ankle pain 
or like hip pain as well. So make sure you're, you're training your, your glutes. And from an aesthetic standpoint as well, females do like guys with like glutes. Girls don't really like guys with a flat ass or they'll prefer like a guy without a flat ass and vice versa as well. Like guys do like girls like the glutes are an aesthetic part of your body, right? So make sure you're not really neglecting them because yeah, they literally contribute to your athletic capabilities, your health. So make sure you're not like leading to long-term pain and stuff. So make sure they're not undertrained and your aesthetics. So they are all around like a pretty important muscle to be targeting and training. The calf raises and many people actually struggle to build their calves. And this is partly due to genetics. But what, me, what, what most people forget is that their calf targeted exercise is always at the end of the workout. And I see this countless times. People always come up to me and say, like, how do you train your calves? How are your calves so like built on stuff? And I always ask them, where, when do you position your calf workout exercise, like your calf exercise? And they'll always come up to me and tell me like, at the end of your workout. And this just makes like, it makes no sense if you're trying to build your calves. If you're trying to build one specific muscle group or one specific like, your lower, say your, just take your upper chest as an example. If you're always prioritizing your, your, your lower chest, right? And you're always putting the lower chest exercise at the, at the beginning of your chest workout, it's just like you're obviously going to have more power and energy focused on your building your lower chest compared to your upper chest. So if you're built, if you're trying to build calves, prioritize them and actually put them at the beginning of your leg workout. And this is what many people don't actually do. And then that's why they struggle to build their calves. You may be guilty of this. So just just try it. Like, trust me on this one. And then just try to put your calf workouts at the beginning of your workout. And it would actually make sense because you've got more energy to put into your calves and like completely like fully just destroy them and train till failure. Whereas if they're at the end of the workout, your legs are completely gone and you, you'll be able to get out less reps for less weight. So that means you're training them less effectively. And one thing is like one very important fact that you must follow as well. One important point that I'm going to mention is don't if you've got tight calves or you've got like stiff calves that you don't really stretch out and stuff. This may be due to your dorsiflectors and this is like the front part of your calf. And <clears throat> this can actually lead to like Achilles tendon pain. So that's just like, you know, the tendon at the back of your foot. Like, I used to get really, really bad pains when I was a child. And this was because my dorsiflectors were really underdeveloped because back like when I was younger and stuff, I was really active as well. So my calves were quite strong and I never really cared about like stretching and like training my dorsiflectors as well. So that's what can happen if your calves are tight and just give that a go, like training your dorsiflectors. You can just search up like a quick video on like how to train your dorsiflectors or how to effectively stretch them. And you will be surprised how quickly your like foot pain or something like disappears. Moving on to the leg press. I'm going to discuss why the leg press is actually the biggest waste of your time. And the leg press is an absolute waste of time. And this is because the leg press, it doesn't like target your posterior leg muscles. So your hamstrings and your glutes at all. And what I see most people doing is like, they'll stack up such a stupid amount of weight on the leg press machine and then they wouldn't like because the weight is so high they can't even get the full range of motion and like w what's the point of stacking up so much weight ego lifting at that point for f just just no benefit because you're not getting the full range of motion you're not even targeting the the muscles that are meant to be targeted by the leg press so essentially you're just moving your legs up and down doing nothing because you're not getting the full range of motion as I said and you're even risking injury at that point plus you're wasting your time because the time you're wasting performing the leg extension you can be performing something more important and say if you are neglecting your glutes instead of wasting your time doing a leg press go and do like hip thrusts or, or deadlifts so yeah just avoid leg presses in general because they don't they're not really effective and the way they're set up as well like is a very limited range of motion you can only like bring your legs upwards and downwards and I find it really uncomfortable, especially like with the leg press. So I just tend to stay away from it. I hope this helped. Make sure you like and subscribe and yeah, chat to you a lot later.